James Northcote. I'm a principal in business advisory at William Bark. And I wish I was here talking to you about how I was watching our boys at Adelaide Oval on Saturday night and seeing um, Dixon, Rosie and Georgianis come on for 10 goals when we flogged Carlton. Um, but sadly, I'm here to talk about coronavirus. And what I really want to talk about is uh, giving you some practical advice around what tax incentives might be available as a result of COVID. William Buck has a proud history of supporting South Australian business and experience tells us that clients want us to strip away the technical information and focus on what they need to do and what you need to do to consider in order to maximise your entitlements. have heard a lot of commentary in the media about this one. What I want to do now is help you work out if you're eligible. So the first thing I'd like you to do when this video ends is to check your turnover. March this year against March last year. And if you've had a 30% drop or more from last year, you're in. Likewise, if you don't quite meet March, check April. April this year, versus April last year. And if, again, if that displays a 30% or more decrease, you're also eligible for job care. Now, if neither of those months have seen you qualify, check May and June and so on until you do qualify. What we know about job keeper is that it ends in September 2020. So the earlier you qualify, the more job keeper payments your business will receive. What we've heard from so many of our business clients at William Bark, um, now they, they might be in manufacturing or IT or farming, really doesn't matter what industry, but we've found so many of our business clients don't actually think they're eligible for JobKeeper payments because they haven't looked through the turnover. But when we talk to our clients and explain how the turnover rules apply, and work with them at at looking at this, so many receive a pleasant surprise to find that they're eligible. Now, it doesn't matter why turnover drops. It doesn't need to be related to coronavirus. It could be a timing issue. It could be um, that you have had a big change in your business in the last year. It doesn't actually matter. So long as you display a 30% drop from last year, you might be eligible for job keeper payments. Now, if you don't quite meet the basic test of, of comparing a month this year against the corresponding month last year, there are some alternative tests available. Some of those are quite complex, and I would suggest that you seek further advice on those. <clears throat> but it might be, uh, there are some, some examples around business being new, or business experiencing strong growth over the last year or well, maybe there's been a big restructure or a merger that, you've, that you have been a part of. And so on face value, you don't pass the tests, but the alternative tests may actually get you in. Once you've established that your turnover has decreased, you then need to consider how many payments your business will be eligible to receive. Now that is based on, uh, by referring to the number of employees in your business. There are a few technicalities that go into determining your eligible employees. I won't go into all of those now, but I just want to follow some general rules. Your permanent staff, so long as they are employed, as at the 1st of March 2020, they're in. The regular casuals that you've um, engaged and employed since before March 2019, and they've been with you that whole period, they will also be eligible. And also one business owner who isn't employed by the business will be eligible for JobKeeper payments as well. I would encourage anyone watching this to contact me or contact their accountant to confirm their eligibility and assist with the administration of um, seeking employee acceptance 
the registration process, and also importantly, ensuring your correct payroll processing uh, procedures are followed. Particularly for those staff where you might pay them less than $1,500 per fortnight, it's really important that we get that right in JobKeeper. So for, for business to receive the full amount of JobKeeper payments, um, I would suggest that you take action before the end of the first week of May. That's especially important for those who have paid less than $1,500 per fortnight for some of their staff. So to confirm the actions I would like you to take, is to please check your turnover this year versus last year on a monthly basis. Secondly, collate your employee list, understand their fortnightly payments and their employment status. Are they permanent, casual, and when they started? And finally, talk to me or talk to your accountant to assist you with the registration process. Focus on now are depreciating assets. Whilst many businesses have been quite severely impacted by coronavirus, there are still others within our business community who have had less impact and who still have a strong willingness to continually reinvest in their business to help make it stronger and help growth. The government recognises benefits that business reinvestment has on the broader economy and have announced two key incentives. The first is an immediate write-off of assets costing less than $150,000 and install ready for use in your business by 30th of June 2020. The second is a 50% bring forward depreciation deduction for assets costing more than the asset write off threshold and that have been installed ready for use in your business by June 2021. It's important to remember that these assets must have been acquired after 12th of March 2020 and are installed ready for use in your business by 30th of June of the relevant year. Now your business might be looking at um, a new ute, fitting out a shop or upgrading your IT systems. Those assets will most likely cost less than $150,000. And if they're installed before 30th of June, 2020, ready for use in your business by then, you'll receive a tax deduction for the whole amount. So given that um, 30 June, 2020 is a bit under two months away, uh, you might need to get your skates on in talking to your suppliers to ensure those assets are with you in your business before 30th of June. You might also have some larger capex investment plans. It could be machinery on a production line. Uh, you might need to construct something or import something from overseas. And again, those assets need to be acquired after the 12th of March 2020. <clears throat> but these ones have the ability to be installed and ready for use in your business by June 2021. If you can do that, you'll receive a 50% deduction of that cost. So to put that in perspective, if you spend half a million dollars, you'll receive a $250,000 deduction. I must stress that I don't want you to do um, these capital investments just for the tax benefit of the deduction. It's important to remember that um, capital investment should be there to help your business grow, and that's what I'd like you to focus on. Buying assets to help your business. Don't worry about the tax deduction, that's an added benefit. In addition, um, there's something uh, called small business entity depreciation been around for quite a few years now, but in case your business isn't currently using it, there have been challenges to these rules over the last few years, so you might be eligible now. First time entry into the 
SBE depreciation scheme might actually give you a big bring forward depreciation deduction. Uh, otherwise, those depreciation claims might have been made in a later year. You might be able to bring some of those forward. To confirm the key points around depreciating assets, these assets need to be acquired after the 12th of March 2020. Secondly, if your asset is costing less than $150,000 and it's installed ready for use in your business by 30th of June 2020, you will receive an immediate write-off of that cost. Thirdly, if you have larger capex plans, you will receive a 50% deduction of the cost of the asset but it must be installed before June 2021. Finally, if you're not in the small business depreciation scheme, you may receive a one-off tax benefit by entering. Whilst I'll focus today on JobKeeper payments and depreciating assets, there are still a few other key incentives I want to share that a number of you watching will find beneficial. First is the pay as you go withholding rebate. This is available for any business who employs staff and withholds tax from wages. It doesn't matter whether you've been impacted by coronavirus or not. The payments will first come through when you lodge your March BAS and will last until about October. So if you haven't yet lodged your March BAS, I suggest you get on and do it because those who have have, all, have received this benefit already. Another incentive available is for business impacted by coronavirus to vary their pay-as-you-go instalments down to zero and potentially also claim a refund on those instalments paid as part of uh, their September and December BAS returns. I must caution though that varying tax payments down will potentially lead to payments being required later on and they may be payable at a time when it's not suited to your business. So if you do still have a tax problem, I suggest that you continue paying those instalments as you normally would. The South Australian State Government is also providing grants of $10,000 to businesses who are also in receipt of JobKeeper payments. So you must be eligible for JobKeeper to claim this one. And you also need to not be receiving any benefit from state government payroll tax reductions. So it's really aimed at those businesses who are eligible for JobKeeper and paying less than one and a half million dollars in staff remuneration. Also, there is good support from the ATO and the banks to support business impacted by coronavirus. The ATO are currently offering some very accommodating payment plans to businesses impacted. And I've seen a few of my clients uh, that we've helped have deferrals taken out to September. It's important to remember that these are tax payment deferrals only and the payments are still required. Finally, the banks um, have available an additional pool of money that they are able to lend business to help them get through this. So potentially up to $250,000 in loans um, or some are also offering payment deferrals on loan repayments um, that, that businesses are able to access. So for any of those who might want to access, I suggest you talk to your bank to help, help them help you through it. Don't forget, if your business is currently renting a commercial premises and you have been impacted by coronavirus, you might be able to negotiate with your landlord for a temporary rent reduction. Alternatively, if you are a commercial property owner, and your tenant has been impacted by coronavirus, it's possible that you could gain some land tax relief. 
on the carriage to look at, at those provisions. I hope today that you've received some good practical advice around the coronavirus stimulus measures from the government. And if you do have any questions or would like to explore any individual scenarios with me, my contact details are on the screen.